What I'm going to talk about today is a piece of my uh, research here at the, the Berkman Center. Uh, one of my projects is digital institutions, and I hope that by the end of this you will see at least my own rather, rather odd um, uh, and idiosyncratic take on digital institutions, but understand why it's so fascinating to me and why the digital world is an important uh, place for this, this work I've been doing. Um, and I'm calling it Modeling Cooperation for First and Second Lives, Suggesting a General Case. Those of you who are Berkmanites probably don't need to be told that, that second life in this context is a metaphor for the digital world rather than, than a, a literal reference to, to the second life uh, a digital platform. I've, I've had a few other people not out of, out of um, uh, the digital world be confused about what did I mean by that second life. So that's why I'm here. And what I'm going to be working towards, I hope, is suggesting a general case, a general description that will help us to understand what are the underpinnings of cooperation in a way that then will be useful to us in lots of, of, of realms. Uh, the talk outline, for, uh, uh, the, uh, it's useful to have a road map. I'm going to talk briefly about why we should study cooperation. Those who don't believe me perhaps can talk with Yokai because he is, is indeed uh, doing some of this as well. Uh, but in general and in the digital world, why is this a problem? Why is cooperation a problem? Um, we do it all the time. Why should this be a problem conceptually? Well, it is, and I hope you'll understand why. Uh, suggesting a better t description, which will get us out of some of that, uh, making uh, the limit, the general case is the approach, and talking about mechanisms and institutions. Uh, what does this look like? What do we, uh, this look like? Uh, suggesting a toolkit, the tools in the toolkit for constructing institutions and, and cooperative mechanisms. Talking a bit about where these are located, that is a, uh, an interesting subtopic, which uh, is particularly relevant here in this kind of context. Then uh, looking at, at uh, uh, well, I, was, I have two applications, and then I added, added a couple more once I, I got to that slide. So we'll actually probably have four applications as a result. But uh, the Coke machine, the digital company, and a couple of other applications as well. Well, why should we study cooperation? Why should we study cooperation? Well, generally, it's a key element of our existence. We are able to sit in this room and talk into microphones and work on machines and, and do all the things we do because of cooperation. Cooperation is a key element of our existence. It makes possible the gains of trade, the, that, that, that holy grail of economic uh, uh, output and, and development. It makes possible specialization. It makes possible scale. All of these things which we do every day and uh, are, are dependent upon us as humans being a co uh, uh, cooperative. It's also a key element in, in biological thinking. It's not just sort of economics and human behavior, but also um, um, uh, in, in biology has also tackled this as a, as a key element in, 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 in the, the growth of life, in the development of life from, from single cell, simple organisms to multicellular organisms to cooperative organisms to social organisms. These are all, uh, in a sense, uh, 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 subsets and subcases of the problem of cooperation. So it's widely practiced. It's ubiquitous in human life. It's widespread everywhere else. Why should it be an, a problem? Well, it's just poorly understood. It's one of those things that we do every day and that has not been terribly well modeled. Uh, partly because we do it every day, we take it for granted. We don't worry about modeling it. Partly is when we tried to model it, we, we, we've hit some pitfalls, which I hope I'll explain. Uh, neoclassical economics is, has an interesting contradiction in this. Uh, they both assume that cooperation is easy i.e. Uh, property and contract and things like that as being just things they assume when they, when they start the, the, out their day. And they have a model which denies that it's possible. Uh, their, their, their rational actor model, when parsimoniously and not very, very uh, intelligently applied, tends to suggest that cooperation won't work. So, so you, an, an economist will spend half their, their day telling you, oh, it's easy and we just assume it, and the other half their day saying it can't possibly happen. So anyway, there's this, this inherent contradiction. It's one of the reasons why it deserves better study. Uh, the biology is, has, has had a similar kind of, of, of trap uh, in that uh, it's gotten located in around some of the logic of the selfish gene, that, that famous, if now somewhat outdated, book by, by Richard Dawkins that summed up this notion that, that somehow or other selfishness was the order of the day and we had to, 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 to trip over things like altruism, cooperation, all of the things which then we see, in fact, occurring. So we need a better understanding of this. Um, uh, we need an understanding that uh, cooperation is a requirement to be simultaneously solved along with output. This is one of the things I'm, I'm suggesting as a take-home message. In economics, they assume cooperation and then work to solve output. In classical economics, at any rate, not, not in, in more progressive economics. 
What we need to also understand is that the, that, that's true, but at the same time, the, the, the predicates of cooperation, the predicates of stable interaction in these ways must also be solved as a simultaneous problem involving a somewhat different logic than the logic of output, as we'll get to in a little later on. So the rationality, which is the rationality of output decisions, is not the same as the rationality of cooperation decisions. And part of the problem has been that, 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 that things like Nashian analysis have assumed that there was an identity between those two, and I'm going to argue that that is not the case. Um, yes. Yes, uh, I mean, a little bit. Output well, is, is basically uh, efficiency style decisions. Things like you know how how do you get to, to greater efficiency in output? Um, uh, uh, the allocation of, of goods and services through 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 uh, uh, rational trade leads to a, to an increase of, of, of the output of of, of, of um, uh, uh, welfare, as, as it's sometimes called, as as, a, as an overarching um, uh, term applied to that which we'd like to have happen. Okay. But the way that things happen, making things we want to have happen happen, requires at the same time a, a simultaneous solu solution of, of, of the structures within which that happening occurs. And it will help us create better institutions. When we understand better the, 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 the fundamentals of institutions, we hopefully can create better institutions. And I argue it helps us to understand traits like fairness, honesty, and other values in human psychology, the kinds of things that ec classical economics has had a, a hard time and struggles with, that actually that, that, that becomes uh, relatively self-apparent why these things might exist if you uh, take this, this kind of uh, approach towards, towards cooperation. Now, for digital worlds, why do we need it? For digital worlds, well, I'm counting on all of you to help inform me. One of the reasons to give this talk early is on is I'm hoping that, that, that I will uh, spark some interest from some of you and that you will come and tell me, ah, yes, you need to take this into account. And so that is, is part of what we'll do. But we think about transactional platforms as a place where this is the case. eBay, a massive exercise in cooperation that is, in terms of classical economics, nonsensical. But we, we see that it works at least to some degree. It's not perfect, obviously, but it works to some degree. Uh, well, I'm, 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 being, I'm, being, I'm being rhetorically um, 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 overstating. My, my, my classical economist is going to correct me, and he's right. Yeah, he's, he's, he's right. There we go. There we go. <laughs> but they will, at any rate, they'll be, they'll be puzzled. Why might that be? Because, because, of, because the, the, uh, the, the interactions between strangers in a context where being taken advantage of is very easy should, uh, at least in, in some rel relatively uh, simple-minded versions of classical economics, there we go, I, I've reestablished my credentials, uh, be, be, uh, be viewed as, as, as so defection-prone that it will collapse. Why is it that that, 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 that that transaction platform exists in the face of the potentiality for being taken advantage of all the time? So uh, the eBay folks are very cognizant of this and have used a bunch of structures which I would argue are fit within the model I'm, I'm putting forward. The, it, in, it, 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 exactly, neoclassic economics of a certain kind. There we go. As I, I hope I dropped the footnote that, that institutional economists think beyond this and, and are thinking beyond this. Uh, but, but at least the neoclassic, the, the straw man I'm setting up for neoclassic economics. Cooperation has not been studied given all of the work on game theory. You're saying outcomes different from a Nash equilibrium. There we go. Are in very imperfectly understood. There we go. Uh, so I'm, I'm being I'm being corrected here. A good thing I brought somebody who can can, can keep me honest. Here we go. Uh, work projects, work projects in the in the digital realm, wikis, software projects, that kind of thing. Again, massively cooperative in ways that that that, that sometimes work and sometimes don't. So again, I, I'm 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 hoping you will keep me uh, on better, um, better um, um, give give me better examples as we go for. Now, why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? And here we come uh, to the work of Nash, um, uh, which I'm going to give you a cartoon version of, which is to really understand that many of the opportunities for cooperation come in defection-prone packages. They become in defection-prone packages, packages where somebody is frequently in cooperation, not always, but frequently in cooperation. There is some uh, mutual contribution that must be made. And that that mutual contribution can often, one of the simple ways that, uh, for a defection to work out would be for that mutual cooperation to collapse back on itself uh, because someone just takes advantage of it. Let me, let me give you a very simplified example. That's a lovely mug there. That's a lovely mug. Let's presume that's your mug, okay? And uh, would you sell me that mug for one dollar? I am selling the mug for one dollar. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, you know, know how I've just defected. I waved a dollar in front of her and I walked away. 
Many, many transactions, not all, but many, many transactions are subject to this form of predation, this form of defection. I can just not do it. And what is her reaction now? Okay, she now knows that I'm not to be trusted at all. And any transaction going forward will become harder. The basis of trust that we worked here, we'll get to later on, but we, we, I use this to illustrate why it is that although we spend every day transacting stuff, basically it's easy to predate. And why don't we do it all the time? The model often suggests we should be doing this all the time. Now, that was in the commons. She's willing to sell it. Okay. So, so she's, she's predating on the commons to sell to me. All right, profitizing out of the commons. So we see this. Another example might be what's sometimes a hunting game described. Let's suppose that it's an old-fashioned kind of hunt up, up in Vermont, right, where I'm going to, I need to push the, the game out of the woods, and someone's got to wait and shoot the game, right? Well, I, I run around in the woods all day pushing game out, and when I come out, the, the person who shot them is just gone. Again, defection prone. That piece of cooperation will not happen unless I have a reasonable expectation that I'm going to get my share of the game at the end of the day. Uh, and we can ex extrapolate this into all kinds of, of, of economic relations. Okay, well, we see then that there was this, the notion in, in Nash, and the way Nash explained this was to say that each one of these games, as he called them, each one of these, uh, these uh, interactions had a dominant solution, had a solution which was the one that made sense for the players. And some kinds of game forms have dominant solutions where the, they have this, they, they collapse back. Predation is simply likely to happen because people, uh, an actor, I shouldn't say people, actors acting in their rational interest will take advantage early on and will not do it. This has been the problem. This has been the stumbling block for lots of people. Now, not a, we should realize, not all possible cooperative games are naturally un, un, uh, have a natural dominant solution for defection and predation. There are game designs that don't. The, 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 the prisoner's dilemma game is one that does. This hunting game is one that does. But these others do not necessarily. There are other game forms you can construct where, A, there is some constraint on the defection that makes it costlier, or, or be some impossibility of defection that makes it unlikely, so that we can create the surplus by cooperation and have the sharing reasonably occur in a way that we will all be willing to play the game. The rewards are decent on the table, and the likelihood we'll get our reward is good. We go play. If the reverse is true, we don't. So what I'm this, suggesting is really quite a simple step, which is to turn the limiting case into the general case and say that cooperation is likely to occur in circumstances where it is the dominant game strategy. Very simple-minded reversal of these terms, in a sense. Dominant strategy is the best thing for me to do regardless of what you do. Right. Whereas in Nash is that I'm doing the best I can. In anticipation of what I may do. True enough, true enough. So which do you mean? Uh, which do I mean? Uh, I'm, I'm being clarified. I would mean in, in some ways uh, probably the Nash. The Nash. It would have to be Nash because you're playing Nash. There we go. Okay. Sorry. Less I'm, I'm restricted. Less restricted. Okay. Um, uh, I, will, I will amend my, my, my statement appropriately. So we're not, here's the, the second step in this, which is we're not stuck in bad games. A competent actor, whether human or other, is not stuck in a bad game. That indeed we can choose and shape the games we want to play in. Part of being a highly competent social animal like humans is that we can assess games. We can look into them in advance and say, that's a prisoner's dilemma. I'm going to be very unhappy at the end of that day. I won't go there. It's like quicksand. It's social quicksand. You know, if we, once we identify where that is, we're not going to walk there. We're going to take the path around it. So what we're going to be doing instead is searching out these, uh, uh, these, these um, uh, better, what I'm using is the better description. We're going to be searching out those cases where, whether Nash or Dominant, we're going to expect the strategy, when it all plays out, to give us our reasonable share of the war reward. We're going to, we're, and where we can't find those games, we're going to restructure the rules of the game to turn them into those games. We're going to restructure those. So we both choose and we shape, we restructure. And this brings me to the, a, a principle called mechanism design. And mechanism design is a, 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 um, a field of economics. In fact, uh, 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 fortuitously, uh, just yesterday, the Nobel Prize uh, uh, Committee announced its winners, and the winners were for their work on mechanism design. So it is, it is uh, a, a, a field. And, and, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I was not, not, not pressing it. This was an edit today. It put Nobel Prize in there. Um, it, it won the Nobel Prize. Now, 
The mechanism design approach looks at creating game structures that make certain end dominant or Nash, um, uh, Nash equ uh, equilibrium uh, likely, but likely along one of these kinds of lines. And what happens is, is I'm suggesting, is that we have a slightly different notion of reality, uh, sorry, of rationality when we are choosing and shaping our games than we necessarily do when we are in them playing short term. So we can step back and say, I could predate, but I can also create something where predation isn't going to happen. And if I'm expecting the other side is going to understand those as well, no, you know, avoid those, those, those nasty Nash um, uh, quicksand traps, we will be able to cooperate together in the designing of, what, of, of, the, of the, the mechanism of cooperation we're then going to undertake. So we can have negotiated mechanism design. We can have deals. We can have settlements. We can have institutions. I'm going to come to that in just a moment. Or we can even have, I, I argue, evolved mechanism design, that essentially evolution of cooperative structures can be seen as an evolutionary uh, means of mechanism uh, design. Um, you said a different notion of rationality. Are you saying something along the lines that um, when we are in a mode of negotiating with institutions, we somehow are outside of the same dynamics we're, we're, we're not. We're, we're not taking those short-term sort of must-defect opportunities. There is this, 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 this sometimes expressed notion that rationality assumes that you will defect whenever it is in your short-term interest to do so. And what I'm saying is that I face a game. I could do that with the game. I could try and play it with you to, and, and defect. But if I understand you're not going to play that game with me, then we, 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 we come into this design ra rationality of, what, OK, what is it we're going to design together to make a, a, a structure within which we can, we can get to a better end and avoid these defection traps, and therefore work with each other to capture all those nice gains of trade, um, specialization, et cetera. I, I like to call it a different rationality. Perhaps I'm being over 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 uh, stating the case, but I think that that what the, the neoclassic sort of narrow-minded um, um, may I may I uh, malign them down the road here um, um, uh, at the, the law school law and economics center rationality <coughs> is frequently this kind of how do I best defect rationality, and there's a different mode you can think in. And okay, I could defect, or I, we could work and construct, and and so that may be at least um, uh, usefully described as a different kind of rationality. It may well be exactly, exactly, exactly. Litigators, you may, I was a deal lawyer. There we go. What can I say? I'm a transaction lawyer at heart, and I want to construct these things. And my, although actually a good litigator should also be able to understand where, because the, the litigation should be about actually using a mechanism and perhaps even negotiating to a better mechanism to, to, to find a, a mode of cooperation. In. But but not a bad not a bad analysis. All right. So what is the toolkit then that we see in this mechanism design process? And there are various lists of these, of these tools. Uh, I have a list that's in the paper that I've got there of um, you know, reciprocity, punishment slash strong reciprocity, hierarchy, uh, dual key approaches, partnerships, contract, property, fairness. Um, um, uh, I could add in there um, um, honesty, a, a bunch of uh, word keeping, a bunch of things like that. Martin Nowak, who's here at Harvard and is, is one of the leading scholars on, on, on cooperation um, uh, uh, in the world at this point, has a, a lovely paper, I believe, in Science last year in which he, he from a biological standpoint, discusses five possibilities and this, uh, also um, uh, sets out his own um, um, uh, description of, of a, something of a general case as well. Uh, he talks about uh, kin, direct reciprocity, indirect reciprocity, network reciprocity, and group selection. I could, uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into these in, in much detail. I will go into one or two of them as I go forward. If any of you are interested in further discussion, I hope you will be, because I look forward to talking with you further about them. So what does it look like? Another key point I want to put out for you is the notion of locating these institutions and mechanisms in, in various places in the world. They can be physical mechanisms. Let me mention the dual key lockbox briefly. The dual key lockbox is, is a, 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 a small safe that two partners can use if they don't fully trust each other or even if they do. They put the receipts into a slot in the top during the day and at the end of the day to collect the receipts each one of them has a key and they have to show yeah. up and both turn the key. Um, 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 there is actually an analogy to this with, with cellular replication and uh, sexual cellular replication meiosis, which guarantees that each of the two uh, cellular uh, parents get half the uh, genetic content of, of, of the, the offspring. 
uh, it's, it's, it's an analogy, not a direct um, 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 physical cognate, but it's, it's, it's in that circumstance. Which then leads me to the genes. Genes actually carry some of these things. We see cooperative mechanisms in animals that, that are presumably not culturally based, and, and again, uh, uh, some kind of genetic instantiation of these solutions can be had. Um, it can be in psychology, values. Uh, the paper I have here argues that values can be understood as a psychological mechanism, a psychological institution, if you like, which allows us to make productive game strategies with each other without having to rely on other means, just out of a, 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 a commitment in our psychology and a commitment to each other that we can recognize. So you were willing to try and sell me that even though you, if you owned it, because you thought I was, I had sent you trustworthy signals, I'm your friend. Friend, there's a Actually, set of things. I didn't want to ruin You didn't want to ruin my, my example. I didn't, oh, I didn't want to answer. I don't own it. I can't there we go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but we see then, that, and the paper goes into this, that in fact one of the roles that values can play in understanding economics is in this kind of institutional economics context where we can view values as psychologically instantiated institutions that we can use to, to form the basis of productive interaction. Uh, it can be in, in culture, in lots of places in culture. It can be in our, our customs and mores, how we just do things, how we, we get up, who does the dishes every day. Uh, could be a customary thing, that there could be a customary rotation. Uh, we can instantiate it in, in more, slightly more formalized uh, 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 cultural institutions, companies, clubs, associations. We can have the rules of the game. Uh, uh, baseball, baseball played in the back lot is, is, a, is a version of our understanding of an institution bounded by rules, not always um, 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 uh, uh, played without an umpire. An umpire is useful. Umpire um, helps with that some of that punishment aspect. It also helps. We might think of it as culture. When I didn't put the three little I in culture three, law. Law is is a clear case of mechanism design, at least from my standpoint. That, that we, if we start to approach it as saying it's one of the places we can put this kind of re-denominating the game, so we come out ahead. It's a way of thinking about. It. Finally, digital worlds, digital worlds. Digital worlds are also having this. Digital worlds can put it in code. Code is law, law is code, all of that. That's partly saying that, uh, that code is institution. Code is a solution. Code is mechanism. Code is a bounding way to pre create these things. If the dual key lockbox can work, so can a dual key computer program. So we can, we can create solutions in, in the digital world that are culturally based, that are physically based, that are uh, psychologically based. All of these layerings that we see. And indeed, many of our solutions are not one dimensional. Partnership, a partnership, psychology of commitment and values, the dual key lockbox, trust but verify. The law, the law which requires a kind of dual key approach to many, many decisions if it requires unanimity among partners in certain ways. Each of these is a, a, a version of the same principle that would, um, um, uh, but it's, it's located in a different place in the composite, which, which, which complicates the whole thing. Applications, uh, a couple of applications. This is my last um, uh, substantive slide. Uh, the Coke machine. The Coke machine, I think of the Coca-Cola machine, particularly in a tough place like a dormitory, a college dormitory Coca-Cola machine. Uh, you know, um, uh, as a college kid, I was reasonably honest, but there were times that you really wanted a soda, right? And, and, and I didn't have a quarter or 50 cents or a dollar or whatever, it, it's gotten to a dollar 50. And you know, you, uh, the Coke machine is a transaction waiting to happen that is made reliable to the Coca-Cola company through physical armor physical armor. There's the big lock on it. There's the cage built around it. There's the, the you know, you can't get into the thing and get the thing out. So there's physical armor uh, making it reliable to the Coca-Cola company. On the buyer side, what makes it reliable? The buyer side, it's reputation, signaling, the big Coca-Cola sign flashing away at you is signaling. This is, this is Coca-Cola's reputation, repeat transactions, all of those things which, 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 which can be in that domain to stabilize. It's just a machine but it's a machine that uses armor in one direction and reputation location in the other. eBay, eBay, I mentioned eBay works, why? Because we've got this reputation thing, we, we also create it as values, the whole we're a village, I'm the mayor of eBay thing, which meant to create, draw in the psychology of values and, and, and community. It was a relatively uh, 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 sophisticated, if probably not fully thought out, system of of, of, of keeping it honest. My understanding is that eBay is, is redesigning that system as we, as we speak and is, is, is trying to make it even stronger and better. They are, in a sense, an, ec uh, an exercise in mechanism design in, in the digital world. 
Google and YouTube, uh, see today's talk later today. I was overhearing a bit of, a, of a, an interview, which may or may not be in today's later t uh, talk, suggesting that YouTube may go to a system where they design a mechanism that allows copyright owners to opt in to give permission while also opting in to give advertising. So they've created an upside together with the permission, which is in effect a kind of mechanism design that makes it worth the while of the copyright owner to play the game. Again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a guy with a hammer, so everything's a nail, but I view that as, as a, an exercise in mechanism design viewed in this kind of thing, where we're attempting to create a cooperative outcome, a dominant outcome, a Nash outcome, where people are going to give permission to use this stuff on YouTube against the background of copyright law. Well, what are the things we have to put into the game to make that probable that they will actually play and, and, and cooperate? And finally, the digital company, the digital company. Um, I'm working uh, with, with the state of Vermont uh, to, to work out uh, some new legal uh, frameworks which will make it possible to run companies, uh, recognize companies entirely through digital means, not just using, using email as a good um, uh, uh, telegram, but using, you know, using software in place of agreements and all of that kind of thing. Why is this important? Because one of the things that the, the, the digital world provides is these opportunities for massive cooperation on projects in ways that we didn't see uh, or were hard to do in, in a, in a non-digital world, the kind of wiki kind of approach to things. Well, what is the governance structure of that? And I'm uh, grateful to, particularly for, for Berkman and, and, and David Johnson, working with Berkman, for bringing this problem to my attention and saying, well, how do we do that? You, you have to have some other form of stabilizing. At the moment, it's done mainly through kind of reputation and values approaches. A legal approach would be very helpful. And so we're trying to craft a law that would make a, 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 a either through a, the corporation or through the LLC, a, 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 a management structure that will give the force of law to these um, uh, uh, mores, to these customs, to this cultural milieu of how, how uh, these kinds of wiki style projects are run currently. So that is the end of, of, of my talk. As I say, I hope now you come to see, first of all, that, 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 that the cooperation problem is one we, we are making progress on. Uh, it's one that, that progress is coming from somewhat non-traditional sources uh, uh, in economics, in biology, in, in other ways of thinking about the world. Uh, that as we make that progress, we can begin to, 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 to see into mechanisms. We can see around some of, the, of the, the obstacles that were thrown up by some of the more limited traditional economics and, uh, and biology about how we make decisions. And that also we can begin to have a, a way to, um, uh, to study uh, them and to suggest them and to design them as well. I'd be happy to talk further with you, as I know we will now, but also individually, and would, would hope that you would be willing to come forward and help me as I, I work on how this applies, uh, how this elaborates and how it applies in the digital world. I have many thanks I support, uh, for support, Gruder Institute, John Templeton Foundation, Vermont Law School, Berkman Center, UCLA, the Ann Gordon Getty Foundation. I want to uh, give, although a lot of people have helped me on this thinking, I want to give a particular help to, uh, thanks to uh, Carl Bergstrom's help, who is the one, he's a, 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 a theoretical biologist in, in um, um, uh, Washington who has given uh, talks here at Berkman and is, is a, was the one who directed me towards um, mechanism design. Um, and the paper is available. Uh, I had hard copies in the middle, which seem to have uh, all gone, but it's also available at ssrn.com, abstract 933012. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Questions, comments, thoughts? Um, um, Let's get someone who hasn't. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right in the back. Uh, yeah. I know that you're, I guess, wading into the digital world. But, um, <clears throat> does your theory talk about why people would cooperate in a structure like Wikipedia, which has created its whole set of mores and customs and rules, but doesn't have any obvious economic benefit for anybody who does participate? And, and, the, and the answer to this is that, the, that, that classical monetary returns are only one of the coin that we like. There, there, are, there are, is the opportunity to show expertise. There are, there are a whole series of, of, of different um, of things that will motivate us in this structure. And so that the payoffs, when I talk about payoffs, do not have to be monetary. They can be prestige. They can be psychic in various other kinds of ways. Um, what what uh, uh, is important is, I think, to, 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 to understand those and, 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 uh, 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 and build them in in a way. So, so my, my theory doesn't require that the payoff structure be monetary. Now, what's interesting is, is that sometimes these, these two st payoff structures can be somewhat incompatible. One of the reasons why I think it is often the case that we want to keep these, these, these large cooperative structures unmonetarized is that the monetarization will, will unravel the basis, the, the, the moral basis of why it is we, we do. They've been stabilized through morality and values and, and non-monetary paybacks, and if you monetarize them, you may destroy them. 
Uh, um, so while I'm, I'm looking forward to having a structure that can monetize them, I'm also very leery of the fact that, 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 that if we've used values and, 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 and prestige as the coin to stabilize them, we may undo them if we go to money. I, 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 I should answer that question. <laughs> okay. Actually, yes, this man is probably better. I sh should mention that Andrew is, 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 it works, works fully in this field and, and, and in, in, in some ways is a more qualified speaker on no, it than no, I. But, no, no, no. Well, well uh, not in all ways, but, but in some ways. And, and, and so he, he can give, give good answers. He, is a, um, uh, he teaches in this field both at Tuck and, and is now doing research in it at um, uh, Harvard. Just to enlarge that question, I mean, for the rest of the people in the room, and you know this already, there's a literature on why do people or software, the same problem. You're giving your, your intellectual property away. Wendy. So I was wondering whether you thought about uh, digital rights management in this context. So I can see it on two different levels. So on the one hand, digital rights management is proposed as uh, an institution in code to hold us to our bargains about how we will use uh, copyright work. Uh, that is alleged to facilitate transactions and cooperation that would otherwise uh, not exist. Um, on the other hand, GRM is foisted upon us uh, as uh, because we are uh, collectively unable to, or we're, we're unable to act collectively to refuse it when it would be in our uh, overall cooperative interest to refuse that bargain and uh, demand open source, open access. But since we're offered it on a one by one basis, each of us individually. <coughs> And, and part of what, there's a, there's a concept called individual rationality, which is in this, in this um, um, uh, mechanism design thing. <coughs> and the individual rationality would tie into this, which says that we don't accept the best deal we could design, but we accept the part of the deal that we can get to, provided that it's better than the deal that would otherwise be available. If we see, see what I'm saying in that? A, a, a participation in, in one of these things. I, I, I drew a, a, a bright line between quicksand patches and, 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 and the nirvanas of, of cooperation. And, and of course, it's a continuum, and that there are places that is you know, not great to cooperate, but better than what would happen otherwise. And there are places where it's, it's um, not great to, to, where it's great to cooperate, where it would be better to cooperate. And so what, we, what we're making is these trade-offs. One of the ways to look at politics, I suggest, in a particularly out there on a limb view, is that it is a, a system of negotiation of the rules of these, these things at a societal level. That, that we, you can use politics to redis, uh, renegotiate the distribution rules and renegotiate the, uh, the, these kinds of, 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 of allocation aspects uh, like, like what you're talking about. And, and politics is a way of accumulating that, that individual voice into a bigger voice. But yeah, I think your point, uh, again, uh, as the man with the hammer and liking nails, I think your point fits perfectly into my analysis, so I like it. Thank you. Yes? Uh, two words which you may have used or may not, and I may have missed it, but I'm just curious to hear your thoughts on them. One is generosity, and the other is relationship, and how those play into what you're describing here. Yeah, that would be in, in my, my realm of psychology, uh, a psychology of values. Uh, generosity... <laughs> One of, the, one of the things, let, let, me, let me step back a moment. One of the things that, that happens is, is that when you start thinking like this, you start thinking mechanistically about some of the most noble human attributes, mm -hmm. which is a dangerous thing to do. Uh, dangerous on two levels. One is that you come to be dismissive of them if you're not thinking clearly. And secondly, other people come to accuse you of, 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 of not having them, because, because clearly if you're thinking about them. Um, let me go back to love for a minute. Love probably plays a highly evolved biological role, but it's also splendid. And, and, and if, you, if, you, if you don't give yourself over to love, you, know, you miss out on all kinds of stuff that's, 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 that's part of the best stuff of being human. I would explain generosity in terms of, of it's, it's, it's a piece of, of long-term reciprocity. If you're within a, within a certainly in-group in -group generosity is, is, is easily understandable in this kind of way as being a, a, a long-term, both, both stabilizing from a fairness standpoint, you have to, to, to have certain redistribution. Also establishing leadership roles can be done through, through generosity. People look to people who were generous as, as leaders. It's not always disinterested in that sense. There is this, 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 this instinct of, of disinterested generosity that's just splendid. 
And I'm not going to dispute it. In fact, what I'm trying to do is say it actually has a place in this economic world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we should just, just, just embrace it for that reason and not go into the sort of neoclassical pathway that, 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 and say couldn't, couldn't exist, couldn't exist, must just be a delusion. Uh, you know, I've had, I've had uh, bad neoclassic economists tell me that generosity was just a delusion and I should get over it. And what I'm trying to say is, no, it's who we are, it's what we are. It has a place in this uh, of a functional kind, but the minute that you, you, you think you can dispense with the human feelings of it, you've already lost its benefit. So What, what I'm wondering is, is whether or not, if we were to diagram what you're talking about, these two domains, the splendid and your theory, with whatever, how we would characterize that, is, is this a Venn diagram that touches but does not cross, or you I, see I, one is a place in the other? I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to suggest that I think there's a place for the whole thing in this theory. Now, again, that's, I'm the man with the hammer, so I like it, but, but, you know, yeah. but, 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 but essentially my starting point is that generosity is either a gift from some uh, divine almighty, in which case then we just say thank you, or it is the product of, of a set of material processes that we can understand. And if, it's, and if it's the latter, if it's a set, product of a set of material processes that we can understand, then we have to come to grips with it in that kind of context. And I'm, 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 uh, I act on the former and believe the latter. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have a question that follows up Bob's question, actually. Um, there are studies of uh, cooperation in the, let's call it offline world, uh, opposed to the right. digital world, um, which show that the key norms of reciprocity and social trust are more likely to arise where there are very close-knit networks. So the more close-knit the network is, the more likely you are to cooperate because you are more likely to uh, uh, you know, happen into functions right. which is basically the best. Right. So I was wondering how do you transfer this mechanism to the digital world because on the digital world you are very unlikely to know, uh, at least face to face, who are the other people in the network, for example on eBay. Uh, you just have a, a, a cognition of them and you don't actually know them. So your perception is that you are <coughs> less likely to uh, basically get function if you defect. So I was wondering if generosity is maybe one mechanism that might make up uh, for this problem, or how do you explain such what it, what a digital world? What, 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 a good, what a good question, because when you're designing digital institutions like an eBay, uh, I wish I were more expert on eBay. It just makes me nervous. I'm not a very good eBayer because it just makes me nervous. Uh, um, uh, uh, that, that what you're doing is, is you're, you're, you're combining at a number of points. First of all, there's, there's a reputation system that, that may be possible to spoof and, and do things with, and, and, but, but there's a reputation system we can use. Uh, there is also uh, there, there, there's the repeat transaction aspect. The transaction histories are, are posted, if I recall correctly. And, and so you can get some comfort from the, the, you know, the fact that if someone's done 100 eBay transactions, eBay is important to them, they probably aren't going to mess you around for, for the 101st. Okay. There's the repeat game interaction. Um, you note that on the NOAC list there was 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 um, 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 uh, network reputation, if I recall correctly, which is again exactly some of this 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 notion of stabilizing through that that mechanism. There's there's the code. Uh, if you're eBay, you want PayPal, right? Because PayPal is a little bit like the lockbox, and at least at that level of tr the transaction, there's many steps in an eBay style transaction, so, uh, including you know, is the money actually going to come from one spot to another? Well, we put in um, the intermediator area uh, uh, PayPal, and it comes clear. Uh, another thing you can put on the list, in fact, is a trusted intermediary is, is a, 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 a way that can, can, things can be made to work. I don't think eBay allows you to send the money to a, a third party and the good to a third party and then have the exchange done. Do they, do they have that mechanism in place? Because that's a way of doing it. It's closing an escrow, as it were, in, 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 the, in the, the legal world. Uh, hmm? For large deals. Yeah, there are. Escrow. Okay, for large deals. Exactly. You would expect it to be there. Why? Because it's one of the ways we can do it. Um, if she doesn't trust me anymore when I buy, buy her cup, I, or maybe it's her pen. Is that your pen, anyway? Uh, does that belong to <laughs> It says Institute for uh, Information Law. There we go. It's not her pen, but it's yours now. Again, if I want to buy it for a dollar, she knows not to trust me. Colin, we both trust, right? So I give Colin my dollar, you give him the pen, and then he acts as the intermediary. Again, th these are... <laughs> you, can, you should keep right. both. Who is it, who, is it who, who, who stands to lose big if they aren't trusted intermediaries? Lawyers. 
lawyers stand to lose big. That's part of what they do. They have to, you know, close an escrow with a lawyer. Their reputational effect, their reputation is how they make their living, which is odd given the low reputation lawyers as a class have. Uh, but their individual reputation. Also, commitment. The three years of law, expensive law school that many people think is unnecessary from an educational standpoint is a, a from the standpoint of spending a ton of money to stabilize your commitment is, is a very effective signal of, 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 of your, of your, what you have to lose. Why do banks put, classical banks have uh, marble in their architecture? Because it is a physical instantiation of the commitment they have made to the amount they would lose if they, if they stole your money. And so a legal education can be seen as the equivalent of the marble in a bank. Uh, uh, from that standpoint of setting these up. So how do we put that into the, in, how do you do that? Well, uh, again, an eBay as a big exchange is interesting because they at least have a lot at stake in keeping the rules honest. And you're willing to go to eBay as opposed to, you know, Joe's bargain online uh, exchange company because you, you, you think you're going to get a, a, a better deal. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Gene. I was wondering if I could go back to Wendy's question and, 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 just, uh, and then apply it to what Corinna just asked, which is if you were designing, if you're doing the mechanism design as between, for example, record companies and all customers in the world, and, you know, is, and you don't want to, may, maybe DRM is the answer, but I'm curious if, if, there was, if there was a solution that you could imagine that plays on everything that you just described. The, the, the record company was a mechanism. It was a mechanism that allowed a great deal of extraction of the benefit of the exchange by, by some relatively unscrupulous individuals, but it was a mechanism that allowed artists and, and, um, and uh, 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 their audience to interact in a, in a certain technological world. Part of the problem the record companies face, I think, is the technology is essentially destroying their role completely. That their role was as, 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 as a kind of a middle broker in a circumstance that's no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. So they're desperately hanging on to an intellectual property position to try and maintain what was, once upon a time, a sensible economic position, a sensible uh, mechanism mm -hmm. solution. So would your, would your model predict, for example, that Radiohead will succeed with their experiment or that yes. any, any band will succeed or only a band with the kind of community that Radiohead has? With ah, ah, good question, good question. And again, when we're laying into the psychology, again, some of this is just con or, you know, an orderly way of thinking common sense, but you, the things you were raising are exactly the right thing. What psychological mechanisms of respect, of, of, of community, of all of these mechanisms that are in our heads that are part of our value system, can a band like Radiohead use? Can they use it directly? I mean, what's interesting is the record companies to some degree set this up for themselves, right? Because they, they start to enlist the bands to say, come and say, tell, tell your fan base why they still need to make us rich. You know, oh, so there are, you know, all these ads about, you know, you, you shouldn't copy. Well, who, you know, hey, hey, if I'm the source of respect, I can be the source, the direct source of collecting. And if, if the distribution channel now is available, so I can be both the source of respect, if we're using respect instead of property to stabilize the interaction, then, then a very different dynamic and a very different set of players come, come to the fore. David and Ms. Tam. So, excuse me. I understand that, and correct me if I'm wrong, so I understand that this is a correction to uh, uh, economic view of cooperation that you find. Well, I, I, I set up a little bit of a straw man for which I apologize, but only a bit of a, a straw man. I, I know nothing about economics, so you totally got away with it. Okay. I'm actually asking a somewhat different question. So I, you put this, as I understand it, as a, uh, you're posing a, a correction to a, a traditional, maybe straw person economics. Um, but this is obviously, uh, obviously, as you acknowledge, a very broad topic uh, cooperation is that can touch on many, many fields, some of which you've talked about. So I, my question is I'm not sure what domain you're proposing this within. Is this a new, uh, is this an economic model? And if it's not, if it's something else, if it's across multiple domains, then what is it that it's, what is it competing with? What do, what do we have to stop believing in order to? Oh, in order to, to accept this. Yeah. Two or three things, two or three things. One, um, economists will tell you they don't study money, they study behavior. And, and so in a sense, I'm, I, it's a behavioral <laughs> model. Uh, the behavioral traditions that, that were most rigorously um, uh, formalized tended to be economics and biology, in my experience. You know, you've got traditions, behavioral traditions coming out of sociology, anthropology, psychology, a bunch of things like that. They tended to be, with some exceptions, less seriously formalized. The serious formalizations that, that most, uh, up until recently, went forward in economics and biology, both 
didn't get how any of this worked in, in a sense. Now, both of them have gone forward uh, better than that. I mean, the institutional economists have done a lot of this, the game theoretic economists, although game theorists got kind of stuck in some of this too. Um, uh, and, and the biologists, the, the classical behavioral biologists, you know, talked about the puzzle of cooperation. Uh, and people like Martin Nowak here are, are, are un, undoing a piece of that puzzle in biology. Some very good work. The, 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 again, I'm, I'm building on, on the shoulder, I'm st standing on the shoulders of a lot of folks when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing this. And my, my one um, uh, perhaps original contribution really is to turn it around, rephrase it in the mechanism design, and then turn it around to say we actually are looking at, if we only knew to look for it, we'd find a general case here. And then if we work from a general case back into, into, into specifics, we can see that the, the, instead of listing the five ways it can happen, we can list, here's an overarching principle for us to understand, and then the, the other, the subcases will, 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 will make sense as subcases rather than as, 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 as things. Yes? Well, I just want to preserve some amount of order, if that's okay. Well, I mean, you can... Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I, I have a question that sort of that takes an abstract look at some of the questions that we had about DRM and, you know, uh, the piracy and the record company. Right. Um, I'm interested in sort of legal theory more than sort of a specific law. Right. Um, one of the things you talk about is uh, using law as a, a, a vehicle for mechanism design, for creating these... Um, sort of cooperative games or cooperative scenarios. Um, now, one thing that I've studied a lot and very interested in is uh, American legal realism and uh, sort of the some of the ideas that were very prevalent in legal scholarship in the early part of the 20th century that um, that law, in fact, is sort of a um, it's a it's a mechanism of coercion and that it, it that it. Uh, it, it invariably involves differential treatment of different actors in society. So you find actors bargaining in the shadow of the law. So, you know, the law gives to A and takes away from B, and there's always going to be a differential relationship between the two, and that's sort of one of the things that policymakers and, and people that are creating the, the structure for markets have to take into consideration and, and to recognize that there is no free market and some sort of a very early... You know, ground that was broken in, in defeating some neoclassical um, eco economic arguments. So I guess my my question is: um, Does your theory, how does your theory view law in the sense of is law something that can bring about good outcomes for everyone? Can it lift all boats, or is it something that is always involves a choice? It always invo involves a difference and a sort of you know. That, that sort of those hard political, you know, are there hard political questions there, that have to be answered in order to develop a cooperative? In, in a mechanism, you to be the law professor, actually. Mm. <laughs> in a mechanism structure, there are people who get better deals and people who get worse deals. The question of a mechanism that, that is put in the mechanism design literature is, is being part of that mechanism um, individually rational, i.e., am I going to be better off in that game than I would be out of the game? That is a different question of, would I redesign the game if I had the opportunity to make me better, better off? Do you see what I'm saying? So, 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 so yes, there's allocations that can occur, but there are, there are, and this is part of the fairness part of the paper that's there that I really didn't go into today, is, 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 is what does the value of fairness do in this kind of mechanism stabilization? And I equate it with this notion of, of, of uh, individual rationality. And, uh, uh, and also the notion of negotiation and, and politics, again, as renegotiating the, the distribution. Um, suppose, let me go to my hunt game again. I'm from Vermont. We, we like that kind of stuff, right? Uh, um, uh, um, I'm, I'm the, 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 guy, the guy with, the, with, the, with the, the, the loud shouting and the getting the game out so, so that the, 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 the person with the gun can, can, can uh, call them and, 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 and take them home. Am I better off, you know, if, if all day hunting all by myself I could get, you know, trying to chase things down, I could get one. And if in all day hunting with this paired up thing, I can, uh, we, we, there's a pair can get 10. If the person collecting them at the far end gives me two, I'm better off. Now, I may not be better off enough to make, to like it so much. I may argue about it, but if there's some reason I can't affect the game, then I take my two. Is that sort of tie into what you're saying about yeah, the, yeah, and, I mean, and, and I may not like it. I may then sit around and try and figure out how I can get the leverage to re-denominate the game so that I can get three, four, or five. 
and as I say, I think that's politics to some degree. Politics is it's something about how we yeah, we because in some ways it's the question of who gets to decide, like who gets to restructure the game. Right? Yes, I mean, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, and exactly. What their interest is because and, it's not. And, and so if you unionize, uh, you can do a, a ton better. It's the, exactly your point about, you know, dealing individually, strength versus individual. It can be individually rational at a relatively low level of reward unless you can organize and re-denominate the game in some way. So seek a, a secondary uh, mechanism of cooperation, which we bring to the primary one, to re, re, redirect how, how, how that, that is, is going to work out. Amalgamated uh, um, uh, hunt, hunt, uh, hunter, hunters, helpers of the world unite, you know, kind of thing. Now maybe we get back to Andrew. So rudely I'm, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's new. What's new? Sorry. Uh, and, and because to some extent you're sounding like early Douglas North. There are problems in exchange, and institutions arrive, and then they fix the problem. And right. later on, he said, "Well, maybe they don't." Maybe they don't. And it seems to me there, you, you, I think you're saying three things. I'm trying to figure out which of those three things is new. Here are the three things I think that are. One is, is you're saying. There are multi-period, basically what the way an economist use multi-period games. The rules get set, then the players play, and then out comes a game. But the notion of mechanism design is just the rules get set, and that's been looked at in cartel theory, and it's not, it's maybe you're broadening it, but it's not really new. This technology piece seems really new to me. This notion that, because indeed there's this battle in the literature, as you know, between the people who say, well, organizations occur because of some kind of technological reason, and no, because they they solve the transaction problem that would otherwise occur, and it's got nothing to do with technology. You're saying, well, actually, technology has a constraint on where you can put the restrictions. Can you put it actually in the, in the device in the field? A constraint and an opportunity. And that seems really new to me and really important. Um, I, I'm grateful. Uh, 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 and then there's a third one. The third one is, is that you're, it, and you started out this way. You started out sound. I thought you were going to talk about the ultimatum game. And then you didn't talk about the ultimatum game. But then when somebody started talking about Wikipedia um, giving away music for free, you started sounding like you were talking about the ultimatum game. And to some extent, what it sounds like you're saying is these non-rational cultural restrictions can work in really surprising places, even when people don't have face-to-face -face exchange, and even when you know, there, there is a long history that's evolved that, that culture. That also seems really new, but you'd have to prove it to me. Okay. Um, on, on, on the first... Do you guys know the ultimatum game? No. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the version, uh, and correct me if you don't think of, okay, I'll give you a dollar. I'll give you a dollar. I'll give you a dollar. Uh, your job is to then offer some of the dollar to him. And he can either say, I'll take it, uh, or neither of us gets any of it. And even the best possible world, it wouldn't even be identified as me. You're giving it to someone, suggesting okay. it to someone. Okay. Uh, so, so is, this is this is again one of these illustrated games. These games, economists love these games. I, I I enjoy them as well. They're clearly little abstractions. They're not what we do, but they but they are but they are nonetheless a lot of what we do in the world plays into these. So you can have this dollar. You make an offer to him of how much you're going to give him of that dollar, and if he says okay, you get it and you have to share. If, if I he, reject it, you get nothing. Now the rationality, the short-term rationality uh, is what? Just think about it. What's the short-term rationality in the ultimate game? Uh, denominated in pennies. If you get so a you, penny, you're one penny. That's right. She should offer. She should offer. She should take ninety nine cents and offer me a penny. But and, and it played out. In, in, but in otherwise, I can offer you fifty cents. You could offer me fifty cents, in which case, but would you know the Make question is? Economists would say it should be ninety nine and pennies. The interesting thing is, and you probably know this result, and is that it it differs in the developed world and in the undeveloped world, and it differs differs in cultures that are more integrated and cultures uh -huh. that are less integrated. Um, um, uh, uh, how, how, how do you think? How, how, how do you how think? Does, no, how does it differ? In one case, in it's more 50 50, and in another case, it's more 99 and 1. And, Which and, and, and I'm not telling you, what do you think? We're I would say in the underdeveloped world, it's more 50 50. No, 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 it's, no it's, 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 it's actually the other way around. It's exactly the other way around. And his arm like transaction thing that he started with is exactly that. If you think about it, how many times you've ordered shoes online and they come. It's kind of amazing, <laughs> right? I mean, you just have this. Have order you, you, believe, right? You have, right? Sure. So, Pick them up, Tom. You got new kids for this. There's this possibility that the other person's going to behave responsibly and the thing's going to come back. And so, and in my class, I've run this year after year, and I'm telling you, the students, 
most often give 50-50, and if it's not 50-50, a student in class will reject the split, which means they're throwing away money. And I do it with 100 bucks. So they're often throwing away. <laughs> do they actually away, get they the give money? Away 100 it's rather school. than and they'll reject the split and I'll keep my money. Which is astonishing. That's the cultural piece. That might make like giving away your music for free. That might make open source for free. But that shouldn't work there because there's no <clears> long term. That's really cool too. Yeah. Well, but but again, we can we can instantiate these things in different places in this in this continuum of, of of technology, culture, expectation. All of these things build on each other, which is part of why it's it's, it's fiendishly difficult to, to to piece apart, but also very interesting. And good digital institutions will cooperate with the psychology of the culture in which they're embedded to make things happen that would otherwise. It's a skyhook. It's pure skyhook. You put it up there in the sky, and you can hang transactions off it. It's the most gorgeous thing possible. But 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 the minute you stop believing in it, it all crashes and none of it works. Yeah. JP was actually. Oh, sorry. Okay, I just wanted to pick up on something that Andrew just said about the, the that second piece about that what you what maybe one of the things you're adding here is looking at how the technological affordances actually give you the ability to create this kind of system, whether it be trust or otherwise. And going back to a comment you made about instances where money kind of can sometimes undermine uh, these other values. I'm curious if, if part of it is not so much the monetization of it as it is the rational counting of it, and that one of the maybe shortfalls of the reputation system that's in eBay that we can eventually overcome through further technological design is that that reputation system is numbers based. And one of the things that I'm doing now as a kind of a fairly experienced eBayer is I no longer just look at the numbers, but I also look at who are you. If you look like an individual seller, I actually in some ways trust you more than if you're a, a, one of those big companies that just churn uh, products all day. And so there's kind of these other richer forms of signaling that we have that goes beyond just simply numbers. And I'm wondering if part of what the technology that we're, we're striving for is something that's richer and deeper in terms of how, that reflect how we do this in face to face. Good for you, good for you. And how, how to put some of this, this layered psychology more and more into that. There's a whole, I mean, I, 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 I've, I've, there's a whole literature on, for instance, impersonal versus personal exchange. Uh, Kevin McCabe, who's come up and talked a couple of times, is one of the key writers in this field. And one of the interesting problems in designing big markets is, is do you want to strip away all of that communication and, and somehow mechanize, you know, make, make, make firm, really strict rules that will allow players to come in without the disadvantages? Because, you know, once we start using those personal cues again, are we back into, you know, who's my, who's my relative? Relative, you know, who 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 looks a lot like me, you know, all of those cues which 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 get in the way of 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 of, of a broader society and a broader participation. So so uh, there's there's a downside to reloading the 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 the, the, the personal transaction indicia into what is an impersonal world. But maybe that's how humans are set up. I mean, this is this is one of the arguments. That, and Kevin McCabe and, and his colleagues have done a lot of interesting thinking about this. Of, of you know, what, how do we mediate back and forth between these? And is the digital world really an impersonal world, or is it a personal world? And and which of those is going to going to be the, the modality, or both, or when? You know, kind of kind of questions. Now to come back to Andrew, to you for just a moment, if I may. Um, new, new. Um, I'm not sure that Douglas North. Uh, I, I would agree with you. I've, uh, I've taken a bunch of ideas from Douglas North. I'm not sure that he goes the next step to the mechanism design piece of it. Um, uh, I, I may be doing him a disservice because I've no. hardly read it all, but I, but I don't think he goes that next step. He sets the problem up, sets the solution up, but doesn't have, I think, the, 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 the pieces, the, this way to describe it at any rate, um, uh, that, that, that I would, would, would hope to bring to it. Um, um, again, all of these, this is one of those ones where a lot of the pieces are sitting around and if I'm doing anything, I think it's just, just, just you know, uh, uh, putting the puzzle together a little bit more thoroughly uh, and saying, yes, this is corner A, this is corner B, and, and we can fill in the middle of it. So I had a question much like Andrew's, um, but just to take it in a slightly different way for the question, which is, I think around this table or this virtual table and those listening on webcasts and so forth, you probably have most of us convinced in your core critique of sort of classical economics anyway, and that um, we've all seen different traits expressed by people in the online environment that suggest other kinds of motivations. The work that Yokai and Perry are doing in a class, for instance, they're teaching this spring. Um, it seems to me that the rubber, in a way, hits the road um, in two ways. On the Andrew's second point is plainly where it seems most different and interesting, at least to me, which is what is it about the digitally mediated environment 
that causes human beings to act differently or the same way and just pulling it out in new ways. Um, and it seems like w how you would have me convinced um, and where I think the great fertile area for further work, at least from the <coughs> sort of digitally driven lawyer um, approach, would be two. One would be, what are the strands that you can pull from the examples that have uh, undergird your critique in the first instance um, that you could pull forward to say, this is what's different about a digitally mediated world or the way in which people are acting in a digitally mediated world, being clear <coughs> to stay free from technological determinism, important point. Um, David and I are teaching a class in spring which is called the web difference. And one of the things we're puzzling over is what makes the web environment different and then what can we derive from that. So similarly, answering that same question that says the web is different or we act in this way in the web that's different. And that's mm -hmm. both why I think the critique works and then helps look forward, right? The second one, and this is, <coughs> you and I have had conversations over two years about this, where to me, um, I need more. Um, I know it's there, but I don't, I, 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 I'm in need of convincing is, what is that institution that you want to build? What's the problem you want to solve and what's the institution? And I think of it as use cases as one example. Or, um, I get the taking versions of the eBay story, the open source story, the Wikipedia story, each of which of course are different in slight ways, um, and uh, somehow the extrapolation of here's how this wonderful synthesis and this game theoretic improvement and these things that are different about the web turn into something that is a brighter future for all of us. It's that piece where I think you can knock the ball out of the park to have mixed the metaphors hopelessly. So anyway. Well, I, I, I take your challenges as, as, as indeed that. I, I, I wish I could come and say, ah, ah, you know, here it, here it is. Uh, two things. One they're is, in there hmm? I'm sure they're in your head. Well, well I, I, the, the, the approach is in my head and, and where I'm, the, 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 the first thing I would say is that I, 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 if, if there are folks here around the table and in the, in, in the ether who are willing to chat about this as we go forward, I would love to, Interact, I'd love opportunities to interact. I'd love a lot of the problems. This whole question about um, uh, you know the the um, uh, the distribution of of, of, of um, uh, cultural product is an interesting one. It might be a spot where some of that could could happen. Um, <clears throat> the one I'm working on is this business one. Is this business one? And 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 what it is inspired in me is not the the notion that I could design what the perfect um, um, uh, uh, sort of sort of wiki company would look like but rather to try and figure out a, 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 a constraint space within which we could use the techniques of contracting and, and uh, combined with, with, with computer uh, and, and you know, software and that kind of thing to, 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 to create something where people can then redesign something better. I, I won't design the best one right up front. I don't know enough. I don't do it every day. But can I help create a legal framework in a state which is friendly to rather than inimical to. And the, and, uh, it's like saying, how would we resign, redesign intellectual property law around respect and, and generosity rather than around property? It's answering Sam's question to say law can be number one, not number two. I'm sorry? The, it's answering Sam's question to say law can be number one, not number two in his construction. Yes, yes, yes. Law, law can, can, enabler, right? can be the enabler in, in all this. That's right, that's right, where we can create the space. That's been, in some ways, the genius of, of the law. If, if you think of law as a mechanism design space, it is both has, has, has set mechanism design. The rules of, of, of property are a relatively constrained set mechanism, which solves a ton of problems in, in this game theoretic landscape. Contract is this astonishing thing where we can design our own mechanisms, and the sanction of the law will come in if we've done the thing formally correctly. Can we can we use those in ways now that will be friendly to the opportunities which which grow out of out of out of these to these differences? So when people actually discover them, they can they've got the law is now in a position to say, yeah, right on this template. We've given you a, a very very loose template. You program it. So just one very specific yeah. example that you might consider taking up. Okay. At the end of the third case study that David Ruskell over here is working on on interoperability, one of the things we're talk talking about is um, we think that we could improve the likelihood that greater in interoperability in the Web 2.0 space could lead to more innovation and better things for society if indeed there were a standardized set of commitments on the part of those offering open APIs to others in a stable, sustainable way. Um, this seems to me exactly your contract problem, which is we could ex ante, or at least fairly early on in the process, construct an environment for Web 2.0 as sort of an operating system on which people are building um, if we were to get the set of contracts right. Right now it's an ad hoc bunch of contracts which I fear could have houses of cards falling on one another. Um, but this seems like a very clear example where we could try to apply your differences and create structural right. stuff through contracts that actually would be meaningful and useful 
and test your theory. So anyway, that's a... No, no, and, and, and remember back on my list, another thing is that we can, can stabilize things is hierarchy. So you can have also, and it's not, and not to be, I mean, uh, uh, evolved stuff is nice and when it can work, but there are times when you just need, need the government or, or the boss or whoever it is to come in and say, you're all going to do it this way. And the problem with that is, is that the, 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 uh, the technical potential of, of those solutions almost always are less than the, when, you, when, you, when, when they come a little more from the bottom up. You know, we end up with a bad television standard or a bad v, VHS standard or whatever it is because, you know, the standard setters often go for something that isn't the, the, the best. The French, remember that French uh, thing that was all about how, uh, that, 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 what? Minitel? Yeah, the, or, or, or the thing where, where, where you went to the post office and it was like the internet, only it wasn't yet. Minitel. Minitel, Minitel. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I mean, it is... Obviously, the French... Minitel. Minitel. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, in a sense, in a sense, the, the, the gorgeous aspect... At least three centralized French things related to what you're just saying. crazy. But the, so the centralization was a bad thing there, and, and, and a much more let the flowers bloom approach was, it was better. Good for a while, though. It was, it was good. And, and there are real problems with the totally let all the flowers bloom, which is yes. 5,000 people build applications on Facebook, but with no decent contract to undergird what they're doing, right? We're pouring all of this effort and personal data and money into it, and we've got thousands of flowers blooming at Google and Yahoo and other places. That There may be lots of innovation, but it may not be in the long term a particularly good solution, absent some form of even bottom-up driven contractual um, standardization. I, I hear you, but what I think becomes useful, and if there's again a, maybe a little bit of a payoff in thinking about these things this way, is that we come to understand that the hierarchy and the contract and all these things are, are, are in the same toolbox. Often we treat them as though they were, they, you know, oh, hierarchy, the best, oh, hierarchy, never, you know. Well, you know, you shouldn't think about it that way. You should say, I've got, you know, I, if, I want, if I want to build a, a stadium, I'm going to use concrete sometimes and wood sometimes, and, and I'm going to hang things, and I'm going to put things up. And, and you know, is, if, if, I, if I get used to the idea that, that all of these are part of what I can use, they have their pluses and minuses, then, 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 then I'm less dogmatic about I've got to be all free or I've got to be all ordered or, or whatever it is. Any last words? I think Melanie, have you heard that? You wanna... Just uh, an answer. To defend so... Minitel? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the contrary. <laughs> so in the top-down countries, there's a new institution mm -hmm. uh, called Authority of Regulation of Technical Protection Measure, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to regulate conflicts between technical protection measure and what we have instead of fair use, list of exceptions, right. and also a conflict of interoperability. Mm -hmm. So uh, the head of this authority is a friend of mine. Uh -huh. So if you want to be connected, they That'll just started the work early September. And last September, he wrote me that uh, unfortunately, he didn't have internet connection at the office. Oh, my. Oh, that would be bad. Well, anyway, that would be great if we connect David and yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah. like something actually to come out of a uh, lunch discussion <laughs> besides just a good lunch and uh, lots of uh, thought-provoking ideas. I'm totally looking forward to see how this evolves <laughs> over the course of the year. Well, thank you so um, much. So please join me in thanking Oliver for <laughs>